Year 5 and welcome to your home learning for this week. I'm so excited to share with you your maths learning this week and we're starting off as we usually do with a problem. Now your problem this week involves four numbers. One, two, three and four. And what we would like you to do is to use those four numbers to create every single number between one and twenty. You can use any of the four functions that we know. So you can use addition, subtraction, multiplication or division. It's up to you which ones you think you're going to need to use. So for example, let's have a look at how we would make one. We've got four numbers, but whether we use all four numbers or not, we don't need to, so we can make that choice. So my first idea to make one would be, very simply, two, take away one. And that gives me my number one. I could challenge myself and I could make sure that all of my answers are going to be calculations that include all four numbers. It is possible, you've just got to have a really good think about it. So let's try another one, let's try and make two. But this time we're going to use all four numbers. So to make the number two, I'm going to start with my biggest number and see how that goes. Four. Now I know that two is less than four and to get less than I'm going to want to use takeaway. So I'm going to put takeaway there. If I start adding that might make it difficult for me to reach two. Four take away three. So if I've got four take away three, I'm now at one. Four take away three gives me one. But I need to get to two. If I added two to my one, one, two, I've got three. So now all I need to do to get down to two is take away one. There, I've used all four of my numbers and I've reached the number two. I'd move on then to number three and how I could work that out all the way through down to number 20. Now, if you want to challenge, of course, you can challenge yourself to always use all four numbers. Or maybe you can start off with using as many numbers as you like and then have another go at the challenge using all four numbers. If you manage to do that, can you see if you can use the same four numbers, but this time work all the way up to 40? And if you're finished with that and still looking for a further challenge, could you see if you could make the numbers one to 20, but this time using two, three, four, and five? Lots and lots of scope with this problem. You can push yourself as far as you choose. Now, after the problem solving this week, we have got some fractions work for you to have a go at too. It's a little bit of a reminder of what is an equivalent fraction and how do we order fractions and compare them. So have a look at those questions and you can challenge yourself to see if you can make it through those too. Good luck and I really look forward to seeing what you do. Now, Time for a snack, I think. Oh, Miss Reynolds, did, did you want this? Oh, okay. Right, year five. This week, your scavenger hunt takes you from inside to outside. Now, we don't want to be upsetting any of the grown-ups, so this week, I'd like to draw or write down the things that you find. Again, set the timer to see how quickly you can collect all the items. Once you've done so, I'd like you to create a potion, thinking about what are the ingredients are you going to use? Are you going to use them all or just a few? And more importantly, what is your potion going to be for? I'm keen to find out. Now, Mrs Patel, are you ready? Catch. Whoa, thanks Miss Reynolds. Okay, hi year five. For English this week, we would like you to read the final extract for chapter one, The Stick of the Dove, okay? Once you've read the final extract, there are some questions which accompany the text, which we really would like you to have a go at completing. Now, some of the questions are also asking you to answer 
using the A format. Remember that? A for answer, P for prove it, and E for explain it. So if you could do that and have a go at it, it will be great to see some of you providing really in-depth and detailed answers for us. All right, once you've finished answering those questions, we would like you to have a go at writing a summary for chapter one. Now, if you can't remember what actually happened in chapter one, because we've given you different extracts to read each week, there is a clip which you could log on to and you can hear somebody read the whole of chapter one to you again. So once you've either read all the extract or you've heard all of chapter one again, we want you to write a summary. Now, if you remember, a summary includes all the highlights for what you have read. I want you to be thinking about the five W's when you write your summary as well. And here they are. So if you plan it out like this, make some notes on who's in the chapter, where is it taking place, when did it take place, what's happened and why, that should help you structure your summary and write it as a cohesive paragraph for us. Okay, so have a go, have a go at doing that and I look forward to reading your um, summaries as will the rest of your teachers do. And you've probably guessed it now, once you've done your summary, that's it, we want you to predict. So, can you predict what will happen next in chapter two? Or if, you, or if you want to challenge yourself, can you predict what might happen in the rest of the narrative? You know, it's, it's, it's quite a long narrative, um, but have a go with just predicting what might happen in chapter two. So do you think Barney might go back and see Stig? Do you think Stig might come out of his den and explore his surrounding area? Who knows? There are a couple of sentence starters on the sheet which might help you can structure your, your, structure your prediction again. Okay, so three little bits of activities for us. Answer the questions, have a go at writing a summary, and then, and then posing your own prediction about what will happen next in chapter two or for the rest of the story. Okay, then we look forward to seeing your English work this week, year five. Right, I'm now going to, I was quite tempted to have the apple, but I need to pass it on. So I'm gonna pass it on to Mrs. Hazel, who will tell you all about your humanities work. See you soon, year five. Francis Patel. Hi Year 5. For your humanities learning this week we would like you to research the types of home that early people lived in and the materials that were used to construct them. Now in Britain archaeologists have discovered four different types of dwelling that early people lived in. If you check out the PDF that is below this video you will find all the information that you need to complete the next activity. What we would like you to do is to draw a typical dwelling from the Paleolithic era, from the Mesolithic and from the Neolithic era and also to draw a typical home from a place called Scarabray. Once you've done that we would like you to label your pictures with the materials that were used to construct them. Moving your learning on we would like you to consider the similarities between homes from the Stone Age compared to the homes that we live in today. We've also included a video link which takes you to BBC Biteside website and it gives you some more information and facts about the Stone Age period. Are you feeling crafty? Stone Age dwellings were made from the materials that people found all around them. Why not make your own Stone Age dwelling? You could use twigs to form the structure of your dwelling and then cover it with materials such as moss, bark, straw, leaves, anything that you can find in the outside environment. Have fun, but don't forget to share your photos. Send them to the UU5 email address because we love seeing your work. Right, I'm going to eat my apple and I'm going to scavenge some materials to make my own Stone Age dwelling.